Great to be here in Galway, you know, a wee bit different, a wee bit of a drive for me. I came down to the festival last year thinking, this is great, like, what a great festival, looking forward to it. Then I saw somebody I used to go to school with, just like walking down the street. This guy I used to go to school with, he was like, what's a crack man, you just here on holiday? And I said, no, I'm, I'm doing a show, and he goes, I have meant to go and see you for years and years. He's like, that's class that you're doing really well. And I went, yeah, you come, come to the show? He's like, nah, I can't make it tonight, but... And I went, I know, but I'm, the show's just... He goes, where is it in Galway? And I was like, it's just here, like outside. We're outside, it, uh, kicking off in about 10 minutes, if you fancy it. And he's like, another time. Okay, I was like, I'll come back when it's more convenient. Um, <laughs> when it's more convenient to you. Uh, guys, not to blow my own trumpet, but I just signed a Netflix deal. Hey, that's rich. Twelve ninety nine a month, unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable value. All the TV shows and films I want. Cheers, guys, appreciate it. Ha hashtag blessed. Um, yeah, I just come up from the north. I don't really know what the situation is there with Brexit and stuff. I don't, I don't really know. I just know if you want to get by with Brexit chat, all you have to do is say fucked all the time. So when people go, "What's crack of Brexit, man?" You just go, <sighs> fucked. Fuck. If you really want to make an impact, you just say fucking fucked. It's fucking fucked. Are we getting the deal? <sighs> fucked. I'll see you later. And, and I don't know what the crack with it is. And everyone in the North, we're all the same because like everyone's fighting over us. You know what I mean? It's like we're the, we're the wee kids in a divorce. And like we don't know who, who we're going to. You know the mum and the dad, like European Union's trying to get us. Yous are trying to get us as well. And we're sort of seeing what everybody's offering, you know what I mean? We're seeing what's being offered because we're pretty sure we'll want a backstop even though we, we don't know what it is, I'll be honest. Like, we don't know, we don't know what it is, but we're, we think we'll want that and a BMX and then we're gonna decide <laughs> who, who we'll go to. It's a bit like whenever my mum and dad did actually get divorced and I was sort of seeing what offers both sides were throwing out before I made a decision on where I went. And my dad's like, I'll take you to Disneyland. I was like, this is my guy, this is my guy. I'm staying with him, and then it turned out it was Disneyland Paris, so it was like, I'm with my mum. I'm with my mum, because I thought he loved me. And I don't really know. I feel like, I feel like the way it's going to work out is European Union's going to get custody of us like during the week, and then at the weekends, we'll go see Ireland. Um, I don't know how it's going to work, but I think it might be all right. Um, doing doing stand-up's a weird job, right? Doing stand-up is a weird job. I saw somebody I hadn't seen in years, an old friend, Met him in Tesco's. Now, if you do stand up as a job, you might work for like 20 minutes a week. So I was just in Tesco's during the day. That this guy I used to go to school with, he actually looked though like my age. You know what I mean? He looked like a 30 year old man. I am a 30 year old man, but I'm very much aware that I look like a youth minister, right? So, <laughs> guy who's trying to do things a bit differently. I, I look like either a youth minister or a young auntie. You know what I mean? Like a very much, like my natural, like I don't look like a man, like, because my natural. Stand, like men stand like this, do you know what I mean? Like guys stand like this, men stand like this. If I don't think about it, my natural way to stand is one of my hips <laughs> protrudes and then for some reason I hold myself. <laughs> like I think a man's gonna come and steal me. I don't know, I wish. I don't know why, I don't know why I do. I, I have the body and face of someone who should always be at a fence overhearing gossip from a neighbor, you know? <laughs> And then saying something that is not my business and really out of order, like a neighbor's telling me about something terrible that's happened to their nephew, and I'm like, well, Geraldine, you don't get shot for nothing. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> not my place to say, okay? I look like a sort of auntie that would say, I'll say nothing, and then would say all the things that you shouldn't say in any situation. And this guy, I, I used to go to school with him. I hadn't seen him since school. He looked like a man, like he had kids with him the whole thing, and he was there to do like a big shop for the family. And doing stand-up full time, I was just in Tesco's that day. I was just in Tesco's, you know what I mean? I was just seeing, <laughs> seeing who it was about, what's going on, <laughs> let's have an adventure. And I got chatting to this guy and I said, man, what have you been up to since school? Like, what do you do? And he said, I'm a surgeon. I was like, that's class, what, what kind? And he said, a heart surgeon. I said, where do you do that? Like, hospital and all? And he goes, yeah, 100, 100%, like where else? <laughs> Where else would I do that? He started pu pushing his kids back. He's like, where else would somebody do that? I was like, I don't know, maybe you go to the Emerson, like a wee, like a wee delivery backpack with all, the, all your saws and all. I don't know what you use, but I don't know. And he said, yeah, do it in hospital. He said, I work in the, the children's hospital in Belfast. 
And I was like, that's great. But in my head, I was like, oh no, because now he's going to ask me what I do. <laughs> so I was like, that's great. And he said, what are you up to yourself? And I said, oh, Chris, actually, I do stand-up comedy. And I thought he was going to take the piss out of me, but he looked at me really, really seriously. And he said, stand-up comedy? <sighs> I wouldn't have the bravery to do that job. <laughs> Child's heart surgeon, right? He, he was like looking at his kids going, Shh, look at that man there. That man is a stand-up comedian. Shake his hand. Shake his hand. I was like, yeah, you dick. Shake my hand. And he said, I wouldn't have the balls to do that. A child's heart surgeon. And I looked at him and I was like, Chris, <laughs> I know you wouldn't, man. I, I guess some of us were born to be heroes and the rest of us work in children's hospitals. And I think they should be in the same bracket. You know what I mean? Like they're not, one job isn't more impressive than the other. Stand-up comedian, child's heart surgeon. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're equally as impressive. I don't want to say I'm better than his job, because that's just not fair. But we're kind of amongst the same level. Like, things can go wrong in both. You know what I mean? Like, things can go wrong in both those jobs. Like, he could, he could hit a vein. Oh my God, imagine. Like, he could hit a vein and a child could die. Equally, in my job, things go wrong. Like, I could get paid tonight via check. You know, it doesn't bear, it doesn't bear thinking about, you know? I'll leave you with this really quickly. Um, the main thing I love about Ireland is our Sunday papers, right? Both sides of the border are papers. Um, whenever you read papers around the world and they're talking about like criminals and real serious things, they just mention the criminal's name and that's it. Only in Irish papers do we put a wee funny nickname in brackets in the middle of the criminal's name. Like that doesn't happen anywhere else. It totally devalues the story. Like a guy called Jimmy McGee in our Sunday papers will be called like Jimmy Two Legs <laughs> McGee and you're going, why? Is that a thing? And then you look at the picture and you're like, to be fair, he, he does have two legs. You know what I mean? It looks, it looks like he does fit the criteria. And the best one I ever saw was a copy of the Sunday World. And uh, I just thought it was really beautiful. It was like a copy of Sunday World like 10 years ago. And it was a story about a guy who was in a paramilitary and had done a bit of a murder, right? And I don't know if it needed the nickname. You know what I mean? Because like, that's okay for a funny story, but I don't know if a real serious case needed it, but they still went with it. And the guy was called like Barry Murphy, right? Which is such a paramilitary name. I just made that up off the top of my head. I can't remember his actual name, but there's definitely guys in paramilitaries called Barry Murphy. And like Barry Murphy can get you red diesel, not a problem. If you need red diesel and someone says Barry Murphy's gonna sort it, you go, no, that's fine, he can get it. And, and I just remember this story was genuinely about a guy who was up on a murder charge and there was a picture of him. And I was like, they won't do the nickname. Oh, they did. But it wasn't a smart one, like it wasn't a pun on his name or something funny. The story was genuinely uh, about this guy doing a murder, Barry Murphy, and it just said, with a wee picture of him, Barry, fat bastard Murphy. <laughs> it's like maybe you just leave it out this time. Guys, have a great festival. I've been Shane Todd. Thank you.